What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and today it is cleaning day. It's always cleaning day, isn't it? Doesn't it always feel like it's cleaning day? You can clean every single tub in your collection and walk in there an hour later and there'll be 25 tubs that are filthy. As if you wouldn't even believe that you just cleaned them. That's called Murphy's Law. Now that's called snakes liking to poop in a clean tub. Happens every time. All right, well today we're gonna be looking at two cool boas that I received in a trade. Yep, one of my new friends uh, drove up from Miami and we traded, I gave him two snakes, he gave me two snakes. I'm gonna show you the snakes that I received uh, and hopefully, you know, we both are very happy. I seem to be happy with mine. I think he's happy with his as well. And that's what it's all about. He loves trading, I love trading. So you know what? It's always great when two people have things that each other want and they can figure out a way to find snakes that are comparable in terms of price and value and then say, hey, I'll give you this, you give me that. And this way we both get what we want. We don't have to put any money out of our pocket and all is good in the world. And everyone's wives and girlfriends are happy that we're not spending money, right? <laughs> That's how it works. All right, let's go into the snake room and see what I got. All right, guys, I did a little trade today with a new friend of mine from the East Coast of Florida and we did a little uh, double swap. Here's one of the beautiful females I picked up. This is a 50% Hog Island, okay, which is a Honduran boa essentially. Hog Island is, a, is an island off of Honduras. They stay very small. If you guys know what a Hog Island looks like, I'll even put a picture up there. Really, really light colored. And you know, they're, they're very inbred on that island because they're they're insulated. There's no way to, to get off there. The boas are really small. They have like a very, they almost look like, like hypo in a sense. And of course, the blood boas are from Panama, so they stay pretty small too. So this girl is a blood, visual blood, with 50% Hog Island blood in her. So you can tell she doesn't look like a regular blood. She actually looks hypo, but she looks different than hypo. And I think she's really kind of cool looking. And she's actually, I think she's a 2019 from what he told me, um, if it's accurate, and I believe it, which means she's pretty mature. But you can tell these dwarf boas, they don't get big. I mean, you can see my hand here. She's not a big snake, but she looks mature. She has a mature looking head. She got the black eye, which is the blood gene producing that. So it'll be interesting. I have to figure out what I want to breed to this girl at some point. Obviously, she's not ready to go this year. Maybe next year. It's possible. And I'm kind of excited. I, I love the way she looks. She's just really unique looking. She's got some really, really crazy contrast. That Hog Island, which is a really... See that the light stuff? That's like Hog Island look. And then you get the blood in there. It looks just... It just looks, it looks, if you're into, if, I don't know if any of you guys paint, when you mix certain colors together, you get just, it looks like there's like been different colors blended into this female. And here's who I'm thinking I might want to breed her to. You guys tell me what you think. I'm thinking, uh, of course, in the water bowl. <laughs> this is my Hypo Blood Onyx Boa. Onyx also is a Honduran boa, remember, super dwarf. And combined with the blood gene and hypo. He's also possibly Honduran T positive, uh, or het for Honduran T positive, but let's see if we can sneak him out of here without him getting too mad. Look at that, look how light that is. Imagine that snake going to that female. We would produce some really, really light red boas we get that hypogene in there, which would lighten everything up even more. They, it would, everything would be blood because they're both bloods. And then we get the onyx gene in there, which is red as well. And the more hypo and the more you strip away black and onyx, you get even more red out. So this, this, could, be the, this could be the boy. So hopefully he'll keep eating, get up to size. He's a 21, um, she's a 19. You never know, maybe next year. Could be what we're looking at. Speaking of 2019 females, I've shown you this girl. I haven't shown this to you recently though. She, I've been just building her, building her. I could have bred her this year. I didn't breed her purposely. She's a 19, she's an onyx power. She's a super onyx actually. 
and I told you these things need to be a little on the older side to breed. I didn't want to push her like I maybe would do for a Colombian. And so I'm, I gave her another year to go. She's got some nice size and muscle mass on her. She is ready to breed for this coming season. The question is, what will we breed to her? Because she's a super onyx blood, Honduran T positive. So we can call her, a, she's kind of like a red baron in a sense, because she's a Honduran T positive super onyx, but then she also has the blood gene in her. And I think she has the anery uh, two gene in there, either that or the axanthic gene that's floating around in these, in these boas too because she actually has a lot of red in her still. Uh, when she was born, she was almost white looking, but she has red. And if there was an anery gene in here, this, this would not, there would be no red tone to this. You, and the axanthic gene, which I know a lot of people don't know much about in boas because they really, no one ever talks about it. The axanthic gene removes yellows. And she has no yellow. She never got yellower as she got older, like most boas do. She just got a little redder, so. I think that she's axanthic. Wouldn't that be cool to prove out? So, gotta think about it. We might, I might breed her back to her father, who's a hypo onyx, het hunter and T positive, het uh, blood, and het potentially uh, axanthic. Well, this, he produced her, so he probably would have to be. This way we can try to produce more visuals of this. That might be the way to go, or we might go in a totally different direction. I don't know, I could, I could breed her to the Red Baron possibly, but I, I want that blood gene to come out. So we got it's definitely gotta be something that has blood in it. So I'm thinking about it. Thinking, 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 thinking. And here's the other snake I got in that trade today. This is a Motley Fire, Fire Diamond, but it's Het Leopard. How cool is that? Now, normally, a motley het leopard would be a solid animal that's striped, right? It has a, like a total stripe down its side. But look what the fire gene does. The fire gene breaks that up. So you got kind of that stripe going on. You got pattern on the side. And it's kind of, the top of it is kind of striped, but it's you got some saddles going on. So fire lightens which we know, but it also changed the Motley le Het Leopard look from a completely solid striped snake to this like broken up pattern snake. And the interesting thing is that one of the siblings of this, maybe I can pull a picture of, is a fire Het Leopard. And that one looks totally different. It looks, it doesn't have any striping. It looks, you know, like a Looks like a fire diamond with the with the um, with the bow tie saddles, which is what usually you get from a het leopard. So the motley gene wasn't able to exert itself the way it normally does on het leopard because of the fire gene. So this is kind of cool. The question is, this, this boy is going to obviously be up to the breeding size at some point. Who do we breed this guy to? What would be a good snake? Obviously, we want to breed it to some leopard or het leopard. Get that fire leopards going. I don't know if anyone's made those. But those gotta be really cool. So let's take a look around my collection and see what female we might want to breed to this guy. Here's a gorgeous female, single gene, GHI. Is that just a gorgeous snake? Now, this snake has gotten really dark because she's probably gonna lay a clutch of eggs. We've been breeding her for a year and I'm hoping we're gonna get some, something from her. I bred her to a GHI, I bred her with a GHI acid lesser and hopefully producing super GHI acids would be really crazy. And I'm hoping she lays, you know, just keeping an eye on her. GHI is one of my favorite single gene morphs. Everything seems to get better with this thing. For those of you who don't know, what GHI stands for is gotta have it. Matt Lear found this gene, named it that. Gotta have it, everyone's gotta have it. You gotta have it in your collection. And it works really well when you mix it with certain combinations. It works really well with uh, Mojave. That's where we, we see a lot of GHI and Mojave stuff. It really works nice and clown. So this is a single gene. Let's we'll see what we can do with this thing. This hurricane hypo that I've had for, she was one of the original hurricanes that came over. 
when I imported her from um, Hans Winter. This girl has been, I've been waiting for her to lay. I can't even tell you how long at this point. She's gotten, had every behavior you could possibly have for a snake that's gonna lay eggs. She's so uncomfortable, she's so big, and yet nothing has come of her. And she didn't produce for me last year either. I don't know what's going on. I bred her all year, I saw locks. Um, is she gonna go? I don't know, but I'm gonna keep breeding her, see what happens. But she eats. Actually, I don't think she ate last week. I think she's gonna. I think she's gonna lay a clutch of eggs. You know, the the key is, and I've made mistakes like this in the past. And I'm afraid to even admit some of the mistakes I've made. But don't do anything. Don't try to like think she's egg bound. Don't think this. These snakes, especially these ball pythons, they know what to do. Very rarely do they get stuck. You know, and 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 can't you know deliver eggs or something like that. She's not in distress. She doesn't look like she's in pain at all. She's still breeding, or she's still at least. You know, doing wrap in the water bowl and doing all her usual stuff, but she's just not ready yet. I'm hoping I'm going to get a clutch eventually. I'm just going to be very patient. And I can tell you that you're going to have snakes that they don't follow the rules. Uh, they do everything you think they're supposed to do, and you don't see anything. And sometimes they reabsorb their follicles. But I really think she's going to go. But I'll keep an eye on her. Look at that beautiful hurricane pattern on the with the hypo gene. You know, look at that head. Beautiful. Here's a beautiful girl that I actually produced a number of years ago. This is a orange dream pastel clown. She looks like she's gonna lay a clutch of eggs and she was bred by my ultraviolet. If you, if you guys watched the video the other day, ultraviolet video, you'll know that that's a super hurricane and she hypo rainbow. So think about what all the crazy stuff we can produce with these, with this pairing, if it actually goes through. She looks like she's gonna lay a clutch of eggs any day, but. She's been like this for a while, so we'll just keep an eye on her. Like I said, eggs are still being laid here, Palumbo's pythons and boas. Usually this is the season that I'm just hatching eggs, but you know, now that I have such a big collection, things go at different times of the year. It just happens. Don't get freaked out. Some snakes go quicker than others, some don't. She was a little younger, so we're gonna leave her alone and just let her kind of chill out. There's a dinker of mine you would think was ready to lay. She's in shed. She actually ate a meal yesterday. Uh, so you, this could be a pre-lay shed for her. Who knows? You know, you know, about, I, I wasn't going to breed her and I bred her late into the season. So we'll see. Look, she's got those zombie eyes, as we say. But you never can tell. You know, a few people reached out to me the other day and went after they saw my ultraviolet video and they wanted to know if um, I was going to be selling any breeder rainbows or het rainbows. Well, I have this, I have two that I'm gonna let go. This is an Enchi Hypo het rainbow. And he's really nice, this guy. He's got some good coloration. Once again, he's 100% het rainbow. He's produced visual rainbows for me and he will be going on the uh, for sale block because I have visuals now, so. Anyone wants him, let me know. I'm gonna show you another one too. And here's the other one. This is a Hypo Enchi Pastel Pet Rainbow. Also beautiful, beautiful, very light looking um, colored snake. This boy also has produced. These are both 18s by the way, and they both have proven breeders for me. And they both produced beautiful rainbows. And there he is, looking really nice. So he'll go up on the auction block as well, not auction block, we'll go up on Morph Market, and you guys can pick them up if you want, to try to produce your own rainbows, these guys are, once again, proven breeders, so they're stuff that uh, you can pair up absolutely in uh, this season, hopefully try to start making some rainbow stuff, gorgeous, snake. And here's one more, this is a Hypo NG Butter Pastel Head Rainbow, so there's, we, we add one gene to each one of these, and this is going to have your butter, I produce some really nice butter rainbows this past season or this last year and they're really really different looking they're really kind of cool so here's another beautiful proven male that's uh, made some nice babies for me so once again this is a everything i just showed is hypo so that's great it's a recessive and then you got and everything has enchi in it and then this this one has butter and pastel in it and he's really nice looking so he'll be up for sale as well so three beautiful at Rainbows, Proven Breeders from 18.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. You got to see uh, some of the snakes I picked up. We kind of looked at some potential breedings that we're going to be doing down the road a couple years from now. Uh, looked at some ball pythons that are ready to explode and hopefully uh, have a clutch of eggs. You know, when it gets to this point in the year, especially with ball pythons, I get nervous because, and I'll tell you why, because I start saying, you know what, I don't think these snakes are going to go. It's we're in July already, you know, most of my snakes deliver in April through June. And, you know, very rarely do I have stuff in July unless I paired them up late. And so you have to just have faith. You have to just say, you know what, keep doing it. Keep cleaning the tubs, keep putting the males in if you're not sure. And hopefully you get eggs. Sometimes you don't, they reabsorb sometimes, they go the following year. Sometimes they deliver slugs, you know, you never know. It's just it's the way it goes. I'm still waiting on boa litters. I'm hoping that they you know, come. It's also also very late in the year. You know, if you put everything together at the same time, you expect to get most of your, your litters and, and clutches at the same time, but that's just not the way it works because all these females are in different, they're at different points of the cycle and they're all ovulating at different times. They're all developing follicles at different sizes at different times. So while one snake might have a, a very big follicle, 25 millimeters, another one might have, you know, tiny eight, millimeter uh, follicles so you just don't know and you have to just be patient and that's what it's about this this snake breeding business is not super excitement all the time there's like brief flashes of excitement and then there's long periods of what we call stasis meaning when nothing happens and if you're not good with nothing happening and just cleaning tubs you're in the wrong business you got to be very patient in this business that's why i have so many snakes because this way the more snakes you have, at least something is bound to happen, you know, at least once a week, you would hope. But there's been weeks where I've got nothing, nothing going on. And all I have to look forward to is cleaning poops. But that's the way it is. You got to love it. I love it. And uh, I look forward to cleaning poops every day. Matter of fact, sometimes I look forward to cleaning poops and not having to deal with eggs and babies and feeding and all that stuff. So uh, that's why the winter is usually good because they don't eat, the snakes don't eat as much and there's no babies yet. And there's like a little bit of a... It's like maybe one or two months where there's just not a lot going on. And it just gives us enough time to regenerate, catch our breath, and get ready for the breeding season. But we're still in the midst of it, so stay tuned. Every day could be another amazing day or another horrifying day, depending on how you look at it. All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.